So, all right, we, we've got the movie edited. We're done. We think we're done. But wait a minute, there's this whole process of, we got to sell this movie. We got to get it out in the world so we can get to recoup the your dollars or the investor's dollars. So what about distribution? What do, I mean, it's, it's a whole new world, but just how do you get the film in front of people, Phil, that are going to get it out to the world? What's the, and, and maybe start with the basics. Explain the distribution process. Well, I mean, I think there are a number of paths. It's like first looking at the film and being able to look at what you have and think about who are the people I can really approach with this. Can I go to Paramount or can I go to Sony Classics or can I go to whomever? Or have I made a film that that's, fits to a certain group of distributors? Like, well, you've made a lot of horror films and I'm sure that there is like, there's like a whole world of horror distributors versus indie film drama distributors. And so it's identifying those people, I think, that you can take the film to who would be receptive to that. Um, you know, there's the whole self-distribution model and all that, and that's not something I think I ever want to touch. That's but painful. You've just got to, you've got to do your research and you've got to find the people that not only can you take the project to, but you've got to be able to almost like interview those people and find the people that you 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 have a good reputation, a good track record um, that you can trust, and that's, that's through rare. it's very rare. And you through referrals, people who are going to be above board about how much money the movie's making, where it's selling, how much it's selling for in those territories, or through those distribution models. It's a lot of research, mm -hmm. and then. You know, when you when you think that maybe you've identified the best of the best, they probably have a long queue of people trying to get their product in front of them. Yeah. Um, I think in any more like with our latest project, the idea was to to make a film um, of of a, a certain level of quality that we could conceivably take to anyone yeah. and try to try to sell it to them and let them distribute it, let them uh, exhibit it. You know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, Bo, you've, you've had a number of movies get out in the world. So what was the process like for you? Well, it's, uh, you know, similar to what Phil was saying, that you find the right person. But, you know, this part of the process is probably the, the one that I, uh, I hate the most because it's dealing with the worst of the worst people in the world. Excuse me if anybody's a distributor in this room. Um, but these are the snakes and the, the bottom feeders, in my opinion, of the world. Um, they take what lots and lots of people work hard on. Um, they take what lots and lots of people put money into. And then they, um, you rarely hear from them often as you would like. They'll call you daily until they get your movie, until you sign on the dotted line. And then after that, you'll be lucky to hear from them once every three months. Uh, and they're just... Um, I, I just don't like distributors at all. I if, really they're, don't. if their mouth is moving, they're they're lying. probably lying. Yeah, and they're they're the worst people that you can deal with in the industry. I have yet to meet one, and I've I have done my due diligence on so many distributors and agents. I've contacted, I've had referrals, I've talked to people, and ultimately, if they can figure out a way to screw you, they will. And it's really really tough. That's the problem with the business is that it's really really tough on that back end of it yes. is because you just can't trust anybody. They don't care about your movie. They care about making, you know, what whatever cap they assign for themselves, whatever expenses they make for themselves. They, they want to reach a point and then, are they really going to work hard to make your movie as successful as it? Probably not. You know, they're not going to work as hard as you work to make it. Right. Um, so that's the, the really, and there's not really much you can do about it. You know, you can try to market as much as you want, but you know, Phil, you can't go to Japan and, and market on the streets and try to get it sold. And yep. then you can't run to Australia and try to get it to the different buyers. And it's just a, it's, it's a really tough process. You put everything that you've worked for, all of the years that you've probably put into a project to raise the money, to find the right people, to produce it, to get it through post-production, to get it as good as you can. And you find somebody who says, oh, this is so great. This is going to be great. I know all these people that are going to buy it. And then you give it to them, and there's nothing else. You, it's like you're handing over your child, and then you're hoping that they're going to raise it right. And they seldomly do. What, so, maybe what, are, what are a couple good I mean, things you can do to at least lessen the pain in your contractual? Like, make sure you get audits. 
every quarter, make sure that, you know, what, do you, what are the things you've done to, to be most well, successful in this? There's a lot of provisions that you can put in to, you can put in uh, performance clauses in there to make sure that they're doing certain things, that they're, you know, sort of giving you back certain amounts of money. And if they don't, you can get out of contracts early. But it, it really isn't a foolproof proof plan because what happens is when that time expires, so does your movie somewhat. You know, your, your, the shelf life of a movie is, is not great unless it's a great movie. You know, once you make a movie, you get a few years to get it out there, and then it runs its course, and you're not going to see a whole lot from it after that. And if you get it out there and it runs its course and you're with somebody and they haven't performed and you get the movie back, unless some other platform comes up, it's tough to make any more money because you can't go back out to DVD, you can't go back out to Netflix, you can't go back out to the blog. You're, you're there. You've done what you could there, and now you're, you've run its, right. it's run its course. So... Um, I haven't done it yet, but the one thing that I like about sort of the crowdfunding idea is that you really essentially find your audience before you make the movie. Yeah. And let's say that you know you can get a thousand people who want to buy a DVD for twenty-five bucks because they believe in your project, and you get twenty-five thousand dollars to make the movie. Yeah. And you make the movie, and you found the audience. At that point, anything beyond that is gravy. Yeah. So, although I haven't tried it, and I've been through the traditional sense of, of raising money, that to me is the one sort of caveat of raising money through Kickstarter or something yeah. like that, is that you can find the audience right away. It's like pre-sales back in the day when those existed, you know, and now who's going to buy a movie before it's made from a guy who they never heard of when there's, you know, thousands of movies that are being pitched to them every single month. Right. Those things just don't exist anymore. The, the distribution has changed over the last 15, 10, 15 years uh, in ways that I can't even describe. It's so much different now than it was back before.